Hi friends, it's Lisa Mears here, and today I'm so excited to share with you the newest release from Pretty Pink Posh, which is all about fall and Thanksgiving, and it's perfect for all of your fall cards. So in addition to sharing the release with you, I'm also going to be making a card, so be sure to stay tuned at the end of this video. I will be making a card with some of these products. I also want to mention that if you're interested in purchasing any of the products that you see here today, I will have direct links to all of these products down in the description box below, and I always appreciate when you use my links to make a purchase because it does help support me and my YouTube channel. In addition to offering these products individually, Pretty Pink Posh also has these products as a bundle, which would save you money if you decided to purchase the bundle. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at these products. The first stamp set is the Patterned Apples stamp set. And these stamps have three different size apples. You can see the outline at the top. You also have the solid that you can stamp with any color ink into the outline. There's also some patterns for the apples that you can use colored inks and make different colored apples. There's also the coordinating dies available to purchase with that. This next stamp set is called Solid Fall Foliage. This set consists of different style of fall leaves. You not only have the leaf shape, but you also have the inside stems. You can see how they're numbered. The numbers show you which stamps go together, so you have the leaves and the stem for each one of the numbers. So you can actually stamp these in different color inks. So if you wanted to use the green for the leaves and then maybe a brown for the stem, you can do that because they are different stamps. There's also a coordinating stencil that goes with that, which we'll see in a little bit. This stamp set is called Fall Icons. There are 12 different fall icons on this stamp set, such as the pumpkin, the acorn, the turkey, there's a mushroom, a scarecrow. And the dies not only have the dies to cut out the icons, but there's also some circle dies, so if you wanted to layer those on circles, you can. This stamp set is called Fall Bouquets. There are four flower bouquets. You can see the one at the bottom left has some sunflowers, which I love. Then the next stamp set is called Fall Harvest. There is a basket and you can put the pumpkins in the basket or the apples in the basket or even the fall leaves or the sunflowers. There are some stamps that say Happy Harvest, Autumn Greetings, and For You. There's also the fall script word die. You can pair that fall word with some of the stamp sentiments. And there is also the many thanks shadow die. And here are a few shaker dies. You have the apple shaker. Now, if you don't do shaker cards, you can always use these as regular dies without making it a shaker. And then there's also the mushroom shaker. And again, you can make a regular mushroom. It doesn't have to be a shaker for that one as well. And then we have the fall leaves border. You have the border there that has the leaves connected, but there's also the individual leaves that you can just die cut individual ones if you wanted to as well. And then we have the stitched turkey. So you can put together a little Thanksgiving turkey and then there is the big fall cupcake. Lots of dies in here. You can make a fall themed cupcake. There's also a little slice of pie that you can make. There's a turkey leg. There's a sunflower, some leaves. There's a mushroom. So lots of different dies that you can use on that set. And then for the stencils, we have the layered mushrooms stencil. It's a three layer stencil, which will create a card front full of mushrooms. You also have the solid fall foliage stencils. Now these are the stencils that I said went with that stamp set that I showed you earlier. So you can actually use the dies to die cut those leaves. And I have a card coming up on my YouTube channel where I made a card with those leaves. This one is called the Fall Words Stencil. It has words such as Happy Fall, 
Autumn and Give Thanks. And the next stencil is called Layered Autumn Harvest Stencils. You can see there's some pumpkins and some squash. This is a three layer stencil so you can color the pumpkins one color and have a different color for the leaves and the stems. The next stencil is the Layered Leaf Lattice Stencil. This is a two layer stencil with a lattice design and in the middle is a fall leaf. So let's look at some of the clay confetti and the shaker beads. This clay confetti mix is called Fall Mushroom Clay Confetti. This has some mushrooms in it. There's also some leaves and some sprinkles. And then there is the Apple Harvest Clay Confetti, which has some leaves and apples and sprinkles in there as well. And then the last mix is the Autumn Shaker Beads, which are the little beads with different fall colors. So before I make a card with you today, I do want to share a couple of cards that I've made so that you can get some inspiration using some of these products. And I will have video tutorials here on YouTube showing how I made each one of these cards. So make sure you are a subscriber of my YouTube channel so you'll be notified when those videos release. So for this first card, I used the stitched turkey dies. You can see all that beautiful stitching on the turkey. I love all of that stitching. And you can die cut this turkey with different color cardstock or pattern paper to make a really fun creative turkey using any colors that you want. I also use the fall leaves border dies and die cut individual leaves to put around that turkey. And for the background of my card, I used the layered leaf lattice stencil and and just put a very neutral color with the lattice and the leaves on that stencil. For my next card, I made a shaker card using the mushroom shaker. I did add the fall mushroom clay confetti inside. I used these solid fall foliage stencils and stenciled with ink all of those leaves and the little mushrooms and the acorn that are surrounding that mushroom. And then I die cut with the solid fall foliage coordinating dies. So that was the stencil with the coordinating dies, but remember there's also the stamps that if you prefer to have stamps, you can do the same thing with stamps. And then the background of that card was created with the layered mushroom stencil. So this next card is not so much a fall card, but I did use the apple shaker to make a teacher card. You could totally use this not only for fall, but to make a card for a teacher. You can see that I used the apple shaker here, and then for the center, I added the apple harvest clay confetti. And then the word die here is the many thanks shadow die, but I just used the word thanks. So as promised, I'm going to make a card with some of these products and I'm going to start out with the Layered Autumn Harvest Stencils. I cut a piece of cardstock down to A2 in size, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm using some Distress Oxide inks in the colors Dried Marigold and Antique Linen. For this first layer of the stencil, I'm coloring all of the squash in the Antique Linen ink. Now notice I'm using a small finger dauber to color those squash because I want to only color that portion of the stencil. If I used a larger ink blending tool, it would most likely go into the other open areas of the stencil and I definitely don't want that. So using a smaller ink blending tool here is key in order to get different colors in the different openings of the stencil. So I moved on to the dried marigold ink and and I'm inking up all of the pumpkins. There are some larger pumpkins and some smaller pumpkins on this stencil and I'm just going to ink up all of the pumpkin shapes with the dried marigold. I wanted to go for a soft muted tone for my stenciled background because my background is not going to be the main focal point for my card. I'm going to have some die cuts on here so I wanted to go with a more muted color palette. Now I could always take this stencil and just put a sentiment on the front and make that a quick card and if that were the case I probably would go with more of a vivid color palette and use some darker inks because I would really want that stencil to stand out. But that's the great thing about stencils is that you can use any color inks that you want. So I went ahead and removed that first stencil and I added the second stencil 
on to my card panel. I just lined it up and make sure I have everything lined up correctly so that I can add the lines to all of those pumpkins. And the lines I'm using a darker ink. This is the vintage photo, which is more of a brown. That way you can see them clearly on the dried marigold and on the antique linen ink. This second stencil also has some leaves, which I'm going to color in red as well as green. So for the red, I'm using fired brick. And then for the green, I'll be using rustic wilderness distress oxide inks. So I went ahead and finished that stencil and now I'm adding the last stencil in this set. This stencil has all of the stems for the leaves and I'm using the vintage photo ink again to ink up all of the leaf stems as well as the pumpkin stems. So now the stencil is complete. I think that turned out so pretty. You can actually just use that alone and put a sentiment on it and make a really pretty card. But I'm going to be putting some die cuts on here and I'm going to be using the big fall cupcake dies. So I went ahead and die cut the dies that I want to use with some colored cardstock and I'm just inking up the edges of the cardstock with some inks that coordinate with the cardstock colors. So for example I have the topping for the cupcake out of the orange cardstock and I'm just using an orange ink to ink up the edges and I'll do that for all of my dies because that just adds some more depth to those die cuts. Next, I'm ready to glue these pieces together. So this particular brown piece is the cake part of the cupcake and I'm just gluing it to the back of the cupcake wrapper. And then I'm going to add the, what looks to me like an ice cream scoop on top of that cake cupcake. And then we have some frosting I put that in some orange cardstock, and then we have a topping here that will go on the top. It looks like a drizzle. And then this piece here is a piece of pie, and you can make this into a pie like I am. It looks like a pumpkin pie with a piece of whipped cream there. There's also some dies included in this set that you can make that piece of pie look like a cherry pie. So I wanna show you real quick the decoration that is on the cupcake wrapper. It has like a little diamond shape, and there's actually a die in this set where you can die cut little pieces of cardstock to fill in the diamonds and the little dots to give this cupcake wrapper some more character. But I'm not going to do that because that would take a lot of time on my part to do all of that die cutting. I die cut a pretty pink posh eyelet rectangle die out of vellum and I'm going to use that vellum to put between the stenciled background and my cupcake. So I'm going to go ahead and add the cupcake to the vellum. I'm going to add a few of the fall leaves. I'm going to tuck some behind that cupcake wrapper. I'm going to add the piece of pie and I'm also going to tuck some leaves behind that pie. For the sentiment, I used the Fall Harvest stamp set and stamped out the words Autumn Greetings. And I just cut that into a rectangular shape and put it on the cupcake wrapper. And now I'm just adding glue behind only the cupcake. Make sure you don't put any glue where the cupcake is not shown through the vellum. Otherwise, you'll be able to see that glue through the vellum. So only on where the cardstock is and then glue that down to your stenciled background and then add that to an A2 size card base. I used a white gel pen to add some white accents to my die cuts. And as I looked more at this card, I felt like there was something missing and it needed a little bit more. So I went back to the die set and found this sunflower die, which is super easy to put together. Just add the center to the petals. I went ahead and created one, and then I created a second one, and I'm going to add both of them to the left side of that cupcake. I just think that steps this card up just a little bit more. So if you have a favorite product from this release, leave me a comment down below and let me know which product that is. If you're interested in any other products you see here, be sure to check out the description box for product links. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.